What inspired you to create this forecasting model all by yourself? Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you for having me here, Emily. I've been following your show for many years and it's an honor to be here. Uh, so how I got started, well, back in March of last year, we were kind of all in a, in a lockdown and I was anxious along with many other millions of other Americans about kind of what's going to happen next. And so I, the existing models at the time had kind of very wide ranges of what's going to happen. So I just wanted to kind of use my own skills, my own background in kind of statistical modeling and create a model that kind of hopefully shows what, what will happen and kind of add more certainty to the situation. And a year later, I guess, here, here we are now. Yuying, thank you so much for watching over these years. As I understand it, you have a background in computer science and high frequency trading. How did that inform your model? Yeah, so, right, so my background in, in finance and modeling was very helpful because right, my, my entire career is basically focused on how do I right, make a model that creates the most accurate predictions uh, and kind of how to uh, make my what, change and tailor my model to be as accurate as possible. And that's something that I think is very unique uh, to finance. And so I, I think just kind of have, adding, looking at this from a very data-driven approach has helped me kind of understand the pandemic from a data side and be able to make these accurate predictions. Now, your model became the go-to for the world, beating academic uh, institutions and other organizations around the world. Did you expect that? And, and is there something that they were doing wrong? Uh, no, I can't say I when I started the project that I would expect kind of uh, to be kind of one of the, the top models. Uh, it was kind of more of started as a personal project. But I guess as time went on, I realized kind of the, the uh, potential kind of shortcomings in a lot of these other models. Uh, and, and that came from kind of a more academic side who maybe more uh, the models are more interested in perhaps kind of influencing policy or showing kind of effects of certain interventions rather than just purely focusing on you know what is the most accurate kind of how to make the most accurate predictions and so kind of I just continue to kind of use data and kind of um, show that right we we can take a purely data driven approach to to kind of solve this problem and kind of let other people know kind of what is going to happen over the next few months regardless of uh, you know, what certain interventions each state does or kind of what our government is doing and things of that nature. Well, and speaking of that, the pandemic is still not over and yet you're actually closing the project down. You made your last update um, to the tracking project. Why stop now? Yeah, so I think what in the beginning, there were very few kind of resources and models out there, especially when I started a year ago. I think there were only maybe like a handful of models. And now, uh, you know, the CDC has over 30 models that are forecasting deaths. And we also have a lot of kind of other resources being dedicated to doing a lot of the things that my model has traditionally done. Uh, so for example, right, like vaccination projections, I think uh, the CDC has done a great job of kind of revamping up their, their data pipeline uh, for, other researchers and scientists to work off of. So uh, kind of the, the, I felt like the additional work that I can contribute has, has kind of lessened over the past few months. And that's, that's a great thing. Uh, we're definitely kind of seeing a lot of effort being put into kind of revamping and improving our understanding of both from a modeling perspective, also just from understanding the, the, the pandemic. And so, yeah, I think you're right, right? Uh, the, the, the pandemic isn't over. I think we still have a few more months to go, but overall I'm optimistic uh, for, for the future. And I think by the summer, uh, anyone who wants to get a vaccine will be able to, to get one. Uh, so uh, at, at that point, right, I think we'll, we'll be able to kind of see a quick uh, return to normal uh, you know, by, by the end of the summer. Kids might not be vaccinated until next year. Give us your last prediction. When do you think the pandemic will fully end? Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a tough question. I think uh, it, it's hard to say. Kind of uh, that 
that the pandemic will definitively end at some certain point. I think we'll get to uh, a stage where the virus will still be circulating throughout the community, but uh, we are going to be able to protect uh, our most vulnerable population uh, through vaccinations. And so uh, I think at that point, right, like it, it, we will have to be, be able to kind of uh, learn to kind of essentially live with a, a, a virus. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's not going to be kind of completely over uh, because right, come the fall, we'll probably, there's a chance we'll still see kind of a, a minor surge, uh, but it's still very far in the future. And I think, you know, we're, we're, when we're looking at this near future, I think summer is a great place to, to see where we can kind of begin to show some kind of normalcy uh, and where we can kind of return to what we were doing before the pandemic. So for that, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic, cautiously optimistic. All right. Well, we love hearing cautious optimism. We all want to know what you're going to do next. Uh, what's your next big project? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I'm currently thinking of just taking some time off and thinking about kind of reflecting over the past year and and what uh, and see what kind of shortcomings there are where you know my skill sets in data science can can be useful and hopefully that's something uh, it will be something in public health and and kind of continuing to add a data driven unbiased rigorous approach to uh, to public health and so. Uh, we'll, we'll see where, where the future takes takes me, but uh, in the meantime, I think uh, I'll, I'll kind of just sit back and and, and hope uh, and again, hopefully, be uh, cautiously optimistic for the future.